Now we'd like to take a look at work permits. As you can see, we faulted the switchgear lineup by just double clicking on the bus. We can see that there's 53.1 calories um, as the worst case energy on this entire lineup. That's typically on the incoming line or the incoming breaker of this system. What I'm going to do is right mouse click on the bus and you can see a menu pops up where we can select arc flash work permit. When I do that, a dialog box will pop up with all the different NFPA 70E tasks associated with a switchgear lineup. Now there's different dialogs for and different task lists for the different types of equipment such as motor control centers, panels, starters and things like that. Now what uh, you can do in the library and we'll show you how to custom configure these different work tasks so you can configure them for your particular safety program. What I'm going to do is scroll down and on the very last work task we have work on incoming source of main protective device. Well we know from the um, one line output we can see that's 53.1 calories at 18 inches. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change that to 24 inches and see how that affects the work permit. Now we can hyperlink these work permits directly to the equipment that we're working on. So they form a record for your safety program of every work permit that's issued. We also have the ability to do different types of um, bus orientations such as vertical, horizontal, vertical into barrier. These will be coming out in the new IEEE standards in a couple years. But right now we have the ability to modify these arc flash um, hazard values um, based on current testing practices. Um, when I select OK, we're going to develop a work permit in Microsoft Word. And so here's our energized electrical work permit. What this permit provides, um, a description of the work um, and equipment that we're going to do. Um, you can see that it's already filled out based on the work task. Now what the user has to do is he has to justify why he is working on this equipment energized. Okay, That's the first thing OSHA is going to want to see. Why are you not de-energizing? And basically the only thing that's going to suffice is that it creates more of a hazard to shut it down um, based on startup procedures or based on H2S gas that might be emitted or um, you're working in a hospital um, and you can't afford to shut it down because of emergency situations and things or a power plant where you can't uh, let the power go out. So there's different types of things that you can use but basically OSHA is going to want to know why you're not de-energizing. Um, the next thing you're going to see is um, this detailed job description procedure. Notice that it's already filled out. So you can customize the library, and we'll show you where that is. Um, you can customize the library so that it automatically fills out the detailed job description and the safe work practices so your users have everything documented. And now we provide the Article 130.1 shock hazard, shock boundary, whether or not voltage-rated gloves and tools are required. We've updated the working distance. It's now 2 feet or 24 inches. Notice that at 24 inches, the required PPE level is now number 4. And the arc flash hazard has re been, been reduced from 53 calories to 34.8. It then provides um, the information we need for our PPE. And this can all be customized um, in the library so it can pick out the exact clothing that your company has. Then what we want to do is make sure that we note exactly how we're going to restrict access to unqualified um, persons from the work area. There was an accident just um, earlier in, in 2007 um, back east where all the workers had PPE on but no one was restricting access just as they racked the breaker in. Someone walked through in t-shirt and blue jeans um, when the breaker racked in and blew up and that person was severely injured. So we need to show how we're going to restrict access, whether that's a barrier or an attendant. It needs to be documented. Then we have evidence of completion of a job briefing. Okay, And now here's the important thing for all the plant managers, the plant maintenance people. Um, we need agreement Okay, in order to um, minimize your liability. 
that this electrician believes he's going to sign off that he believes this work can be done safely. He's also signing off that he's electrically qualified for this task. So what it means is he has been trained for that particular energized work task. He's gone over it, he's passed the testing on it, and now he feels that he can do this task um, energized. Okay, so he's going to sign off that the work can be done safely, he's qualified, and he's signing off that he has had a job briefing from management. Now, there's also several sections for management to sign off. And you can customize this form. It's just a word template because not everybody needs to sign off. So management is signing off that this electrical person is qualified. He has been trained for that particular hot work task and that he's had a job briefing from management. And here's what the job briefing, we're just scrolling down. Here's what the job briefing looks like. What are the hazards? So you're going to go over with the electrician what the hazards are, the voltage levels involved, and the one line copies and pastes directly into this Word document as a reference. What are the skills required? Are there any um, foreign voltage sources present, like uh, capacitors that um, can be still on the system, any back feeds from emergency systems or alternate sources, those types of things? All of that is documented in the Easy Power One line. What are the, what's the potential for arc flash? Are there any unusual working conditions, such as water dripping on the equipment or dust blowing on the equipment? Are you going to be taking off bolted covers, or is this a simple hinge cover um, takeoff? So all these things go into this job briefing and planning checklist that needs to be um, reviewed for every type of energized work. Remember this justification. NFPA 70E and OSHA are expecting you to de-energize for all um, work if possible. If not, you better have a very good reason why you're going to work at HOT. Now I'm going to close out of the work permit and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Window and the standard library we're looking at and you'll see over here on the left under Work Permits for switch gear between um, 208 volts and 1 kV, you can see the different work tasks that we have listed. Now you can customize this based on the work tasks that you allow. You can have different incoming options such if the incoming breaker will protect it or if it's uh, just the feeder breakers or if it's just the main bus information. We can have different units, different working distances for your standard. We can have um, hazard um, category reductions or risks that we can define for each particular work task um, as well as the hazard category reduction option which would actually take away PPE levels based on the risk assessment if you choose and whether or not voltage rated gloves and tools are required so that gives you an idea how all these different types of equipment can um, be developed and customized for your particular um, safety program so that gives you a great idea what's going on when I go back to the database, um, I am going to click on this, and you can see where we've actually linked the work permit, different instruction manuals and things that can be hyperlinked to the document. Let's take a look at what happens when I click on our, our uh, AKD switchgear safety procedures. When I double-click on that, it actually brings up a Word document. It shows me that this um, switchgear has isolated and barrier-protected main bus and breaker. It documents it, so now the workers who are going to work on this can automatically verify it without going into the field and, and tearing everything apart. That's just some of the things that you can document with the hyperlink feature of Easy Power. And so this can, you know, be part of your safety program where we're documenting safe work practices and procedures, all the different main, maintenance manuals. You have a one-stop place to go, which is your one line which is recognized by all your electricians, all of your electrical engineers, all your safety people, a one-stop place for all the safety program information. So that's a, that's a good look at work permits and a good look at how we um, can customize EasyPower to match your safety program.